I want to go to you first on this. Those statistics are devastating. Um, and I wonder, as someone who used to run a state, what do you make of the filing of Chapter 9? You have to do this. Um, the problem is that this is really complicated. The, the um, analog in private sector is you're now going to have what would we would call in the private sector debtor in possession financing, which means that you can bring order to the city's finances immediately or mm -hmm. in fairly quickly. And then you're going to sort out these really difficult claims. I mean, these folks who have earned their pensions are going to lose something. Yeah. The question is how much. I, I, I imagine that the, uh, the controller or whoever Kevin Orr's title is went to each of them and they, none of them would be very flexible. And so now this is the process you have to go through. And it's, yeah, the Detroit's going to come back. It is going to come back. When you have a medium, medium home price at $45,000, people are going to go buy those houses sooner or later, but you've got to have a government to run the place. Yeah. And but but that, that point about having a government is, I think, part of I mean, we can talk about the micro story of Detroit, but it seems to me that Detroit, as always, is standing in for all kinds of things about America. Right. And mm -hmm. in the case of Detroit, the reason that the tax base becomes so small is because of a loss of population, right? So po folks move out, they're not there to pay the taxes on the homes, and the, the kind of deterioration is what you see in the numbers you suggest. But this lack of tax base is also exactly the thing that many Republicans would impose on us, yes, even when point. our cities have sufficient populations, even when That's our communities point. have sufficient populations. This is what it looks like when government is small enough to drown in your bathtub, and it is not a pretty picture.